Hi everyone, here's part two of a video I started last week. It's coming together really nicely. And uh, last week we looked at how we could layer up some fabrics and what we could see in them. And this week I'm going to start with some stitching. So I'm starting with two strands of a stranded white floss or cotton and I am just going to start sewing a wavy line across the top. And in this way, with this simple running stitch, I can hold down uh, some of that uh, sheer fabric at the same time as I'm sort of following that mountainous kind of line there. So it could be clouds, it could be another further away mountain range. And I'll do it in white. And then I'll grab some more colors, probably bring in some beigey brown kind of colors. But um, this just gives you a good idea. It's just not a straight line, just a nice gentle curve and see where it takes us. Now, I almost never use a hoop. I prefer to just be able to pick it up in my hands. But sometimes uh, you're stitching, if you don't go loose enough, can be a little bit tight. I'm going to give myself a little bit of slack here when I end off doing a couple of stitches over top of each other. And then I can use my needle to prise up, you know, some of those stitches to just sort of loosen them a bit all the way across or back to where it started to gather up a bit. Now, can you see those few like white lines? Yeah, they're showing up against the linen and uh, that's pretty good I might even do a third one yet down into the brown but I could bring in a, a little bit of a, a darker neutral now as I'm coming down I think so I'll try and find some threads there we go I think something like that at this stage Or do I have anything even lighter? Not right here. These are good neutral colours though. Maybe that colour. Alright, I've got a couple out now. I'm going to start with the lightest one here. And I'm just going to do the same. I'm just going to do some stitches across. Very, very simple. And you can use one thread or two threads. And these are stranded cottons. I think I'll just use one to start with. That's two, so that you can see the difference in uh, how thick it ends up. to start the same. When I feel like it's getting too uh, bunched up, I don't really like working with hoops, but um, I try and make sure that it's uh, loose enough, the stitches, I don't pull it too tight through. And I'm just going to make sure that I've got this down, these layers, see how quickly this is coming together, really. I'm not trying to go really over the edge. It doesn't doesn't particularly matter. Um, on the edge of things, you know, I these wavy lines will suggest things to people. That will be enough. Well, I hope they do. Because this misty background, you know, this could be a lot of um, things, couldn't it? some of it up into the cream, back down again, in a way we're blending 
blending that background in at the same time as we're getting it attached to the linen backing fabric. I think this one can come out now as we go down we won't need as many pins there oh, I turn it upside down or wherever I need just to make it easier for me as a right hander to uh, to stitch I'm just gonna go back down this way now Of course you don't need to join it together with running stitch, you could use something else. I'm about to run out of this thread so I'm just going to end it here underneath my trees. Through to the back. A little stitch or two like that on top of each other. this bit so I might go that darker shade now So let's have a look so far we've got just this running stitch we're going to leave that linen showing and we've gradually brought a little bit more color down and that that green that's working really good it's a sage kind of green so that yeah that looks pretty good as as suggestions of bushes and th trees in the distance something happy with that so I'm now going to bring in a greeny color and just uh, pop that through that a little bit. Maybe we'll use a seed stitch now. Can you see how I've decided to join this in with little seed stitches? And I'm letting them wander across. Seed stitches are just small stitches in different varying directions. See how I'm letting it go up and over into the creamy colors and back down. And it's sort of suggesting a more uh, like an edge, like leaves, something. And it also holds things down nicely. So I think that'll work. I'm just going to keep doing that for a little while. Now, as you can see, I added in that seed stitch in two different colors. And now I've decided to just cut a little bit away here. Just so that it looks like it's exposing that brown underneath. And I'm hoping that sort of also looks like trees in the distance and stuff like that. So this sheer green sage green kind of color fabric I think I'm going to use a bit more of that I'm going to cut sideways again that allows me to have a nice ragged edge so I like it and pop it in somewhere maybe that'll look like another little hill covered with trees I'm going to cut the other side now just to make it a little bit more raggedy So layering up these shears really does give us uh, it's almost like a painty, painterly kind of effect. And see how I'm adding a darker brown there. I could add that in and then put my 
green on top, I could add the brown on top of the green. It will all give different effects, you see. I'm going to do a little bit more snipping out in this green. It's a bit tricky, but if you shove your point of your scissors in first, you know, to get a little get a little snip, then you can you can uh, improve that hole later. So I'm looking now at all of the lovely uh, salvage edges that I saw and I thought they are really suggestive of grass. If I add them in, in the foreground like that, you know, it really does start to come together. And now using that gold raffia that really started the whole process. I don't really know how to use it, just that I thought that poking up in amongst, sometimes on top and sometimes behind those strips of salvage edges, that would really look like grasses to me. And the fact that it was gold meant that it really did add a little something. So I'm just going to do a running stitch here and just see how that goes. A running stitch that will hold down that um, salvage. And when I come to one of those little bits of, uh, of cut off bits of raffia, I'm just going to do a couple of stitches over top of it just to anchor it and then I'll continue. I can then snip those strands or I can separate it out, the raffia, with my needle. You'll find other threads and things that can work, yarns, all kinds of things work, but I'm just using the tip of my needle or, you know, just my fingers here to tweeze out different shapes as I'm attaching it just to add a little bit of variety in that and grasses don't just stand up and they go all different directions. So I'll just lift these ones up out the way and concentrate on one lot at the moment. And sometimes I'll do some diagonal stitches on top. You know, like a spray of different grasses, I'll come back and I'll use different heavier threads or something, but I'm just trying to make sure that they're tacked down somehow. There, you can have a closer look now to see how that's going. And that salvage doesn't need to be straight. I can put a little hump in it or whatever I like. So here I am teasing more out. Sometimes I'll go on top, you know, just vary it a little bit. I'm doing some different techniques just to try and see what works. You know, I'm doing a little stitch over top of the stem of it, but I'm also sometimes doing a diagonal stitch on top of it to hold it down as well. Just seeing. And then I'll work my way across and do a few little running stitches just to get me where I want to be and try it again. But... I think it'll be very effective. It's a little bit tedious though. I might have to think of a different way to do it, but this is all about experimentation, so I'll see. But it is effective, a kind of a golden wheat kind of color. I like it. I'm just gonna try it with the matte board frame around it, just to see if I still think it looks good like that. I haven't got the uh, middle ground in yet, but hmm. getting out a thicker thread, like I said, I'm going to do some, some more of those diagonal stitches, you know, just to fill that, uh, make it look more realistic. Hold down some more. So I've used running stitch, some seed stitch, and, you know, some long diagonal kind of stitches here but it's all the one stitch it's just an in and an out nothing too fancy but using a thicker thread here that really that really helps to to um, build up the variety and I think it's going to be a really nice picture I'm going to make that my my foreground and once I get these other pieces back in there I think it's going to look pretty good. But I'm having an idea that that was a little bit fiddly. So I've grabbed a longer length of that raffia. And I'm just folding it, you know, like a concertina. 
just folding it. And uh, I think if I did that, I could just attach it down the bottom. And, uh, and then later I could maybe um, trim it so that it was all different lengths and, you know, separate some bits out and make it more, um, you know, more varied then. But just anchoring it down the bottom like that, that seems like a good idea. So I'm going to try that and see if that, if that's the go or not. I think it may be. So I'm just going to grab some thread and and just uh you know attach it around you know make sure that they all stay together like that a little bit and then i will attach it and maybe do some diagonal stitches on it just to sort of start holding it out doesn't look like much at the moment i'm going to catch you up now because i've had a little bit of uh, camera trouble and perhaps you can see where I did this, it was a little bit finicky. Those are the little bits of raffia. And I did these stitches over top to try and hold some of it down just to start it. There'll be more stitching there. Here I thought of a better way to do it and I just folded zigzag style, you know, some of the raffia. And uh, down the bottom, I have just attached it. Out that's outside of the frame actually, so that doesn't matter. And then later on I thought I can shape it and cut it and stuff, so that's fine. Um, up here we're joining in these bits, you know, these different salvages. And here you can see I've started with a brown thread, a running stitch, and it's going through. And then I decide part way along, oh, I could easily do a few grassy stitches to hold that other bit above it on as well at the same time so um, that's what I'm doing and I'll do it again see here we've got a nice little tuft of it showing that's the other salvage the nice furry one salvages are the edges of material and quite often overlooked people throw them out but I do all kinds of things with them and so I think we're getting somewhere I think we are getting a nice landscape but we'll come back once I've done that basic tacking down, and we'll see what we can do to really make it pop. But as this has gone on a little bit, maybe we should make a part three and really finish this one off nicely and see what extra things we can find that'll really polish it. But I think there's a little way to go and uh, we'll do a part three next time. Thanks for watching. If you've liked it, don't forget to press like. Subscribe if you haven't already and thanks again.